wherever you are. Okay. Um, okay, so um, uh, item number A, this meeting is available on Zoom, as we can all see. Uh, hey, one second. Okay. Um, I had a, a note come up on my screen there. Um, is available by Zoom, as we all know, because we're using it. Um, that's available on the city website. Um, item B, roll call. It appears everybody's here, correct, except for, what do we say, Rebecca? Uh, Rebecca's excused, and Older Johnson is not here yet. Okay. Um, and we can start without Older Johnson, correct? Um, number three, um, uh, approval of tonight's agenda. Um, one of the um, um, item number six on the agenda has requested to move up because they have to leave to attend the meeting. Does anybody want to make a motion to agenda? Uh, uh, what do you call that? Amend the agenda. I'll make a motion to move that to the be the first item addressed. And a I'll second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays here? Okay, so that item number six has been moved up to item number one. Um, great. So now do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Ron, I'll make the motion to approve tonight's agenda. I also want to point out to the commission uh, that I'll be abstaining from items five and nine as I have business relationships with both of those applicants. Okay. So motion to approve the agenda. A second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? No? Okay, motion carries. Um, approval of the minutes from the April 19th meeting. Um, we have a motion for that. So moved. And second? Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. I'm abstaining because I wasn't present. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we're going to start out with item number six on the agenda, which is the uh, consideration with possible, excuse me, COA 23-17, consideration with possible action on a design review for a mural located at 164 North Broadway. And uh, I understand that there is somebody here from that property. So do we have a motion to open the floor? Uh, let's do staff presentation first, please. I'm sorry. Can we do staff presentation first, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm just getting Jason. It. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> One sixty-four North Broadway. Um, commonly historically referred to as a Pearl Street address, but uh, I'm looking for pictures. So okay. we know it's in the Broadway district. That's good. And I have pictures of it. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is this building here. You see it on a map. I've got a relatively recent picture, probably from Google Street View there. Um, once upon a time, a previous owner painted the Baycare Clinic mural at the top, which is neither a good nor bad thing. Not that anything's good or bad, morally speaking, in this, but. Um, Next slide, the building historically has had a mural in that spot. And we are specifically talking about the 1945 addition to the Thomas Produce Company office slash warehouse. And the National Register nomination back in the 90s, you see this text comes from that nomination. And it specifically calls out both the historic 1911 corner portion and the historic 1945 addition upon which this, you know, cheese cold storage mural and later Baycare Clinic mural were, were painted. And here you see on the Sanborn map, just to, you know, confirm indeed there's this 1945 addition. The addition further to the south that extends along the streets, that was taken off in uh, sometime prior to 2000. And uh, so building is, as you see it here. So the COA proposes painting a mural on the 1945 addition, which would wrap around to the south side as well, not just on this east street facing side. But, uh, you know, again, some side by side views, you see where the historic mural was, where the Baycare Clinic mural covered that historic mural, and then the proposed pretty mural. Um, unfortunately, next slide, Secretary of the Interior Standards is pretty clear about not doing this. Um, specifically painting masonry that's 
historically been unpainted. That's not recommended. Um, we also look at the bottom one there using paint colors that are not appropriate to the historic character of the building and district. I'm not going to be the pretty police, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, next slide. Uh, you want to make sure that you're using proper manufacturer's instructions, vapor permeable paint. But then, of course, the Wisconsin Historical Society has information, which they're very clear in calling out. Best practices are to leave unpainted masonry as unpainted. They go on about how many coats of paint is too many coats of paint. We may be at that limit because I know the Bay Care Clinic has had at least two different iterations of a Bay Care Clinic. And then if you are going to paint it, it recommends using vapor permeable paint. That's great. Next slide. So I can wholeheartedly endorse from a preservation perspective, the painting of the area that has been previously painted. That's that upper portion where the cheese cold storage mural slash sign was where the Bay Care Clinic sign is. Secretary of the Interior Standards is clear about not painting unpainted historic masonry stuff. So I have to recommend against the mural as presented. However, if at your discretion you, you opt to go for a mural that covers the entirety of the facade of the historic 1945 portion of the building, I have to caution you, you know, technically against rising damp and how that can cause a freeze thaw cycle that will accelerate the destruction of the masonry. So if you choose to, you know, encourage a larger mural, I would recommend that you leave the bottom, say, five or six feet of the building unpainted so that rising damp and moisture contained in the brick has at least that much range to escape without having to work its way through vapor permeable paint. That's what I've got. Thank you very much. Ron, you're muted. Okay, do, uh, do we have a motion to open the floor to discuss this? Any motions at all on anything? Oh, Sorry, so moved uh, to open the floor move to open the floor to discussion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed to opening the floor? Okay, from what I understand, we have somebody here from that property that wants to speak to us. And I do not have the name. But... That's Tim. I'm, I'm the property owner and I'm actually on a call in. Okay. Um. State your name. We can see it. Uh, are you Tim Bisa? Bisa, excuse me. Yes, Tim Bisa. I'm okay. the owner of the property at 164 North Broadway. Okay. In Green Bay. And the only thing I'd like to share is the brick that the um, existing sign is painted on there right now. Currently, um, I did purchase four of those brick from a local brickyard um, just yesterday. As a matter of fact, that I was hoping to make it to the meeting, but unfortunately, I could not to match that brick exactly. So if we're really considering historical part of the building, that brick is not very historical, I guess I would say. As well, um, it is on the east side facing part of the building. And I pretty much challenge anybody who's driven past that building on that side of recent, um, the traffic counts on that road are about 13 cars per day. So the exposure of that to any highly trafficked areas and such within the city, uh, that building is quite well blocked from quite a few um, trees and buildings on the other side of the river as well. So therefore, I, I think it would be a great way to beautify the building and give people to reach and extend the Broadway district to that side of the road as well, and that side of the building. I think it'll enhance the building, enhance the property, and enhance the um, Art Street area of the Broadway district. Anything, anything else you'd like, oh, anything else you'd like to add there, Tim? I'm sorry? I said, is there anything else you'd like to add right now, Tim? Uh, not at this point, unless anybody has any questions of me. I do have a question, Tim. This is David Siegel. I'm one of the commissioners. Uh, 
I guess I, I'd like you to elaborate on your point about the low traffic. And I, I know what you're talking about. That's a very low traffic area. Uh, but I'd like you to elaborate on your point about the significance of that, because frankly, it argues against even putting the mural there. If it's such low traffic, why put something up there that's at such great expense? Well, this mural will be an interactive mural. And so we believe we will create some traffic in that area, as well as some future plans that we have with this property as well. It will tie into that as well. Okay, and then a follow-up to that, and that's very reasonable response, a follow-up of staff's recommendation against painting uh, the brick. Uh, my question for you is, are you aware of the potential harm to brick from being painted? Because that's the that's the basis for staff's objection, which actually I do uh, uh, acknowledge and support. Sure. I own about 21 commercial properties in the Brown County area. And of those, I would say 10 of them, we have painted brick. We've had excellent results on all of them except for one property. And if anything, it helped preserve the longevity of the brick itself as well, when properly done. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, and, and one thing I took in, um, you know, in driving around these different properties is I noted that that Broadway district area down there um, is just loaded with murals. Um, it's, it's become like an art district in a sense as well. Um, I'm not saying that's pro or con. I, I, I was unaware how many murals are actually in that area until I actually drove around to look for this building and to see the mural on that building. So I just want to add that to the conversation. Not that it means anything, but to the point on how you had to look for the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to look for the building too. It's correct. So we're trying to preserve and protect the existence of a historic building that wasn't easy to find. Bob. Can you elaborate on the interactive part of the mural? I didn't see that anywhere in the notes. Well, if, if you see in the um, photo of it, there's a large branch with the owls on there. Yes. And this is just a similar rendering to what the idea is. And it'll be refined more so. And it'll be where you can stand like you're standing on the branch with the owls, or you're actually holding the branch and part of that. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm following, but there are no other uh, elements added to the face of the building other than the paint. Do you mean, will there be anything added to the front of the building other than paint? Yes. No, just paint. That's it. No flashing LEDs, no nothing. None whatsoever. Okay. There are existing lamp lights at the top of the building that reflect yeah. down the side of the building. Those will be kept in place as they exist now. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I'd just like to make the comment that uh, uh, Tim's intention of drawing people there certainly is laudable, but unfortunately, we are obligated to follow the Secretary of the Interior standard, which Jason very clearly stated, which uh, uh, adamantly recommends against painting brick. Uh, I'm absolutely would support uh, painting what is already painted, but I would uh, support the recommendation against uh, permitting painting the unpainted brick. Well, unfortunately, I'm not, I don't have any scientific research or data available to me right now to prove that we could extend the life of that brick by painting it rather than shorten its life per Jason's. Um, he also stated that that portion of the building was a utilitarian um, facade and which means usefulness, 
and there's no historic value in a usefulness portion of the building. It was an addition that was put on considerably after the original building was built. I don't have the exact uh, years in front of me, unfortunately, but um, so I, I struggle with the fact that we're defacing a historic property when you can see the blend of different materials that were updated to more recent products, products that are available yet today in the marketplace. Um, so I don't know that we're preserving any historic portion of the building at this point. David, was that a motion that you had? I believe we need to close the floor first before we can make a motion. Uh, unless Tim has anything else to say, give him uh, say one last chance to uh, to speak. Well, I think if it gets approved, obviously that's our goal. And if it's not approved, it would be a very disappoint, very large disappointment that a person can do with what they wish, as long as it's within some standards of the city. Uh, to try to preserve this as a historic building when that portion of the building actually is not historic by any means. Like I say, I was able to walk into a brickyard and purchase the same exact matching brick, um, which is readily available in today's marketplace. Jason, could you address uh, Tim's uh, point about it uh, not being historic? Well, sure. The National Register nomination calls that addition out specifically and the whole building is identified specifically as contributing. So the nomination says the 1945 edition is utilitarian. It is therefore historically significant because of its utilitarian nature. Um, you know, it, it's historic because, because it's been identified quite formally and legally as being historic. And the utilitarianness of it is its historic trait. So, right. You know, I, I think I think that seems very subjective. Okay. Well, that is uh, to me that's a very compelling point Jason makes. Uh, as you said, it's now legally established as historically contributing. Uh, Tim, I understand what you're saying about finding you know essentially the identical brick, but to me that's not compelling that uh, it. Uh, diminishes the historic importance of that addition. Well, I guess I'm just struggling on finding what the historic value is of that addition. If it was built in 1945, it, it you know, was an addition to the historic building that was existing. I would agree to that. But is it a necessary component to preserve and protect the original component of the building? I don't believe so. Not in my opinion. I guess I could elaborate and say that there are not very many cold storage warehouses in the Broadway district. This is perhaps the one. Um, yeah, the, the building is no longer a cold storage, has not been for some time. It has been converted to office space on the interior. If anybody would care to take a tour of it sometime. Yes, yeah, so it's been um, rehabilitated as, and adapted for use. That's that's. Certainly encouraged. Susan? I was going to um, ask, I, I appreciate Tim's efforts to do something to improve the district, but yet I'm just wondering why it's so, so important, so critical to do this. We want to try to make our building a part of that community on the Broadway district and part of the art district as well, which as we know with the future redevelopment of the old Ford Square to tie into that as well. What about, what are your feelings, not that I'm proposing this is a definite option, but just putting this out there. What about just, it was kind of touched on only painting the area that has already been painted with that Baker sign. I would have absolutely no interest in doing that. Okay. I think, 
I think it would look out of place in that section of the building and it has to be tied in. And that's why I suggested to the artist and to on Broadway district to wrap it around the corner was to tie that in and make it look more authentic and original. Okay. There's nothing additional. I propose a motion to close the floor. Second that. All in favor to close the floor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, the floor stands closed. Um, well, team, does uh, anybody want to make a recommendation at this point? Ron? I will make a, a motion that uh, we deny this request to paint the unpainted brick as recommended by staff. I'd second that motion. Have, well, have a motion, having a second. Um, let's let's take a vote. All in favor, say well, aye. Are we, well, aye. Well, 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 are we gonna have some discussion here? Yes, sure. I'm sorry. Ron, I just need to disclose, uh, obviously as on Broadway is the applicant on this, uh, I'm gonna need to abstain not only from voting, but from the discussion as well. Okay. Um, sorry, Paul. Paul, what did you have? Well, I, you know, I, I'm taking a different take on this, and I know what the standards say. Um, if this building didn't already have the mural on it, I would deny it. The fact that the upper portion of the building's already been defaced um, and has been for several years, I don't. I don't see a harm in, in coming back and putting a new mural over the top of the existing billboard that's there. Um, we can argue all day long whether the painted brick will deteriorate faster or slower than unpainted. Nobody can predict exactly how that'll work. And that's the responsibility of the property owner to maintain their building regardless. Um, I do see that there's a substantial portion of the 45 edition that's still going to remain unpainted. Um, and so based on that, I guess, even though I don't agree with practically everything the applicant said tonight, I don't know that I would object to doing a mural. Over the entire facade, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a poor decision to take it down to the ground. Yep. It, it clearly, it changes from brick to concrete on the, the base of the building. Um, from an architectural standpoint, even if you had the mural, I wouldn't paint that concrete base, especially because the way it ties into the loading ramp to the left. But that's just an artistic opinion, and opinions seem to vary a lot tonight. So um, no reason not to throw mine in there. But uh, I guess I'm also concerned about you know what they're going to do with the the louver and the electrical panel and then looks like there's some potential drain or vent piping on there, how they're gonna treat that. Um, but that's again, that's the property owner's um, discretion what they wanna do with that. Um, you know, a, as it's proposed here with the exception of my objection to the concrete base, again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna vote against it. You know, as, as I stated earlier, um, it, it, everything Paul just said, I mean, I agree with that as well. And, and the thing is, is that it is an art district. Um, and again, I was kind of, I was kind of, on Broadway's done a lot of work down there to improve that whole area as an art district. Um, so I, again, I, with all the different arguments about the brick and I, like you just said about the concrete, well, that's interesting proposition there as well but um i you know we're talking we are talking about history but we're also talking about a district that's in development right now and growing in green bay
Anyone? Well, let me add to my statement, just so everybody understands where I'm coming from. The minute you paint that brick, you've defaced it and it's no longer preserved and, and you've gotten rid of the historical nature of the building because the building was brick and it wasn't painted when it was built. Um, and so in my mind, the damage was done when Baycare painted their mural on the side or the previous tenant, so on and so forth. Um, so as long as the entirety of the building wasn't being painted, and there's still a significant portion of that 45 addition that's left with a natural brick and concrete facade. I guess that's where I'm looking at making an exception to what we're doing here. But I don't, I absolutely believe that this is not a preservation effort by painting that mural there. Hmm. Sorry, Paul, I just I want to make sure that I'm, I understand where you're coming from, because what you're saying is that there's a substantial amount of brick left, even if they get this mural approved, which is not the case. The only the only way there is substantial amount of brick left is if they only paint over the existing painted area. So is that is that what you're meaning to say? Oh, I'm, I'm, if you move your cursor to the left, you've got an entire facade above the garage door, and then oh, that's all newer addition. That's circa two thousand or oh, later. Oh, is that okay? I didn't understand that. Oh yes, it's only this portion here that lighter colored brick. Okay, I apologize. I did not understand that that portion of the left wasn't. I thought that was all part of the forty-five structure. No, the portion to the left is actually cinder block. In which case, I mean, I would encourage that entire thing on the left to be painted up. That'd be. Great, nothing historic there, no damage to be done. But um... okay, I didn't realize that. I apologize. Thank you. I, I guess I was not following it either. So. <laughs> well, then I guess, Paul, like, do you have a motion that you want to make or? There's a motion on the table already. Okay, well, uh, that was David, correct? Yep. Okay, the, could you repeat the motion, please? I'm sorry. Um, staff recommendation. So paint in the existing painted area, no paint on unpainted brick. Motion. And then we had a second also, did we not? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was? That was me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, having a motion and having a second, um, do we have, do you want to take a vote? All those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Um, of those opposed, say no. I vote nay. I vote nay also. Um, okay. Um, so what does that bring us to, Stephanie? Uh, three yay, two nay, one abstain. And so what does that mean as far as the motion? Motion passes. Motion passes. Okay. Get a so, point of point of information here, Ron. Just uh, you know, Allie from our team is on the call, uh, and this is just really more informational. So, just wanting to understand if, uh, in light of the conversation about the newest addition, the cinder block, if the property owner were to want to do anything on that part, do they need a certificate of appropriateness for that? Yes, because it's still on the same property. Um, COAs go by property, but we could, that would be approved. There'd be no issue with that one. Does that require Landmarks Commission approval or can that be a staff level approval? It's Landmarks. And of course, the reason I'm asking is because this event is probably taking place before the next time that the Landmarks Commission meets. And I think it might be best before you move away from this agenda item that you maybe approve options that are available to the property owner. So just for my own peace of mind, I did recommend that option via correspondence prior to this meeting, like last week, week before, and the response I got was that there was no interest in doing that. So...
what they want, at least that option open to them then if they wanted to do that in the future, if they aren't interested in it now. I think it would be, I, this is Allie speaking. I think it would be good to have the approval if that is an option um, than not having anything at all. So I'm the lawyer, Brian might be better suited for this. I believe that you can reconsider that item and add onto that staff recommendation, the, you know, the same thing and just add language that it would be agreeable on the 2000 whatever edition. Um, I think- Do an amendment to that. It has to be somebody that supported the original motion that would make a motion to reconsider and add that language. And I'm just, again, I still have to abstain. I'm just trying to impartially share what the parliamentary procedure is around that. This was Tim Bisa, the property owner. You can just um, deny it, leave it the way it is, and I'll pursue it a different way. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Um, well, I guess we, we move on to the next item then. Yes. Um, no, there's no further motions or amendments on this item, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so we're down back to item number B, number one, COA 23-06, consideration with possible action on design review for a new front porch located at 820 South Quincy Street, held from the April 19th, 23 Landmarks Commission meeting. So the first okay. several slides here, if I could just jump in, sorry. Uh, right. These are repeats from last month. There's the location on the map. You see what it looked like in 2015 here, much more recent. That was fine, cruising along. Yep, and you saw this slide, you saw the next slide, which is now this slide. You saw the next slide, which is now this slide. Uh, you even saw the next slide, which is now this slide. And the next one, the next two. Yep, keep going. That's all repeat stuff now. This is also repeat, sorry. Here though is new information. So this is the proposed replacement column on the left, straight from Lowe's. And just for reference, the existing column on the right, you see a nice wooden column, not fiberglass. One thing that sets the current column apart, of course, is the egg and dart capital portion up at the top, which is absent from the proposed replacement. I'll take that for what it is. Next slide, the proposed railings. Here you see polycomposite pre-built rail kit, actual size of 33 and a quarter inches high, but once you put a little gap at the bottom, that's gonna be 36 inches tall compared to the current railing, which is much lower. I have not been on the property. I have not measured. I'm gonna speculate that that's, I don't know, 24 plus inches. So it'll be a foot taller if approved. Then on the next slide, the proposed decking is this composite, relatively wide six inch decking material like you would see on a back deck. This would be in lieu of the tongue and groove wood porch deck, which is much narrower, probably three and a quarter inch wide if I had to guess based on experience. So the next slide, you've seen much of this before. I just crossed out what uh, I've changed. So the recommendation is that at the first floor, the first story, the existing columns, railings, and balusters really haven't been demonstrated to be irreparable. Uh, and the proposed new rail creates that caged in appearance, which Preservation Brief 45 cautions against. And in cautioning against it, they propose a booster rail design. And then the new item there is the tug and groove decking, composite decking, like what we've approved on other properties would be more appropriate than the six inch wide, you know, six inch wide with gaps between board kind of decking that's been proposed. At the second story, again, there's no existing historic material to concern ourselves with, but the proposed rail design again, is going to create a caged in appearance, whereas a booster rail design might mitigate that. Um, so my recommendation, again, is to debate the merits of a booster rail design, but uh, it's hard to, hard to recommend 
the first story changes as proposed, given that what's there may well be reparable. And indeed, the property owner has said that they're not really committed to, to replacing it because they, they want to make up their minds once they get started, it seems. So that's what I have. Thank you. Jason, could you go back a little bit and show uh, what you mean by the caged in or the proposed versus what exists? So slide 13. So just to expound upon this, historically and traditionally, the upper rail of the porch railing system will be at the same height as the window sills at the porch. And that's generally gonna be about two feet off the porch deck. So here in this photograph taken from the street, you know, allowing for changes in height and perspective, you can pretty plainly see that the porch rail as it exists is more or less in line with the window sills. Now, Stephanie, if you go back to slide nine, you can see that in the photograph on the right, again, those porch rails roughly at the same height as the window sills. The drawing that we see at the left shows probably a 36 inch rail height, which would be required by code if we're starting from scratch. And you can see, you know, they've taken the time to even illustrate that those rails are going to be about a foot higher than the window sills. Now, I, I stopped short of drawing my little stick figure caricature on the porch, but but this caged in look is what slide 11, preservation brief 45 warns against. And uh, I'm wondering if they even use caged in somewhere here. Uh, anyway, what they propose in this preservation brief through the Secretary of the Interior is that picture at the top right where you keep what looks like the historic rail height at that lower bit. And then you have a, a booster rail, which often is painted, say, black or something else to disappear effectively. That's the, the design compromise that the Park Service endorses, where you both maintain the lower rail height appearance, yet have an upper rail that meets code requirements. So that's best I can describe this caged in look. Is the applicant on the call or no? I cannot tell. Um, if you are here, you can unmute yourself and let us know. Does not look like it. Okay. So, you know, to elaborate a little bit more too, I'm, I hate to ambush you with this too, but as the city looks forward to developing design guidelines for each district, this has very much been an issue with kind of an open question within our own discussions here at City Hall. You know, does, does the 36 inch code requirements govern all, or do we want to maintain where we can those railing heights that are a much shorter height? I guess I'm looking for your decision on this property to basically guide us as we develop design guidelines for the districts. Are we going to embrace higher railing heights? Yes, no. Are we going to embrace booster rails? Yes, no. Or are we going to try to press ahead and circumvent code requirements and insist upon an even lower rail height than what safety code would require of us? I'm not sure you're actually circumventing the code because there is a specific chapter in the IEBC that is relative to historic properties. So in, in my review of that, and again, I'm out of my lane on that, but when I look at that, I don't see anything in the International Building Code specific to porches. I see a lot of information about fire suppression systems and handrail heights and stairwells, that kind of stuff. I I'm firmly in an area of, I don't really know how that existing building code portion, that chapter applies to porches. Um, Ian, if you do know, please educate me because I'm I'm kind of out of it. Sure, I, uh, I can't right here or right now, but 
between now and the next meeting, I'd be happy to sit down with you and go through that. Yeah, some additional context. Obviously, you run into porch redesigns all the time on this commission. So right yep. now, we've been working with our building inspection division, and we look at them case by case. So are they taking off the whole thing and rebuilding? Are they only taking out certain pieces? Are they remodeling or repairing versus you know full replacement? Yep. So that's how we've been able to thus far maintain the shorter rails. Um, our inspection division is fairly agreeable to those things. Um, yeah. But we don't have a set policy or something that dictates that explicitly. So in those design standards that Jason's talking about, that's where that would come from, where we'd finally negotiate the end-all be-all between us and inspection of when is it allowed to have the lower porch rails. Um, so just keeping that in mind that we're not going outside of the code right now. We're still able to work it with our inspection division. So they'll kind of follow our lead as needed because there are design um, things like the booster rail that get them into compliance if that is needed from our inspection division. So don't let that lead your just your decisions here. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, could you put back up Jason's recommendations for this one? Mm -hmm. I don't think you went through them, Jason, or did you? And I missed it. Well, You'll find generally when I have a recommendation, I'm pretty forthcoming with it. Here, when I dance around an issue, it's because I don't like what's proposed, but I don't really have a sense of what you good folks are going to like. My point here is that at the first story, from a pure preservation perspective, the existing columns, railings, and balusters should be repaired. They appear to be repairable. So my recommendation there is to not approve of the replacement columns or railings of the first story. Uh, as far as the deck material is concerned, we have existing tongue and groove deck material on the North Oakland property last year with the storm damaged porch. We worked with that property owner who agreed to install a composite tongue and groove decking of comparable dimensions. So I would propose the same here. Um, and what's been proposed by the property owner is not that. It's the wide six inch you know, back deck decking type material. When it comes to the second story, again, unfortunately, all that material is gone, so we can't really insist on a grandfather clause letting us replace existing low rails with new low rails. So on the second story, my recommendation is a low rail height with a booster rail design that would meet code and try to mimic the appearance of the short railing height at the first story. So, so these are my recommendations. Jason have, or uh, Stephanie, have you had interaction with the applicant regarding uh, repairability? Because I think that's probably a very early pivot point in the decision. It was asked of them and they did not give a response. That's what I got out of the email. Yeah, we, we had a correspondence where I pointed out, you know, things we would like more information on and what Landmarks Commission has typically required. And on that, you know, I addressed maintaining the existing railing, removing and repairing and replacing it with the existing railing. And the applicant was largely silent on that and effectively said, you know, in that silence that, they like to do as they please when they get there. So they'd like to have the, the tall new rails approved if they should so decide to do that. And thank you very much for the information. If the applicant wants to replace the existing rails with the existing rails again, they would love to do that too. But uh, the applicant was non-committal on what course they intend to follow. And uh, Jason, I, I would agree with you that uh, that porch, the lower the lower half, did look it looked completely repairable. Um, it did not look totally gone. Uh, obviously, except for the tongue and groove deck, that that needs work. But uh, the columns and rails were all in pretty fine shape. Do we know on the issue of the the decking because this is going to come up and it has in the past the new composite materials? Um, Ian, maybe you know this. Are you, will the manufacturers uh, look down upon if you install that decking material without a gap in between the boards? I'm sure there's some expansion contraction, it, given its plastic nature that 
they wouldn't want it abutting itself tight. Yeah. Um, but in a tongue and groove situation, like it is traditionally, that does allow for some expansion contraction and a sealed surface essentially to the space below. Right. I guess that's what I'm just trying to determine if if the new composite materials, if they're the same width of the previous decking, um, if they can be installed, and although you don't have the tongue and groove feature, if they're installed tight, aesthetically, you're not going to, you know, it, it does mimic then the historical tongue and yeah. groove decking. Mm -hmm. I think, if I remember rightly, the direction of that decking is from the front to the face of the house. It's yes running in that direction. Um, I can't remember if it was this one or another one that had a picture of the end section of the uh, proposed material, but it was like a core. Yeah, here you go. A cord out uh, piece. Uh, again, I'm not sure that that's traditionally what we'd expect to see along that front edge, uh, but I think, in in my opinion, the decking is less of an issue than it than the railings themselves as presented. I I I have a very hard time changing the complete aesthetic of the home uh, with the railing, whilst the decking is far less visible. Uh, and and I don't think would be detrimental. Um, I, I agree, and that's kind of why I was going that direction with the decking. Yeah. I mean, part of what I think is going to happen here is, I'm, I'm guessing the property owner is going to install that decking parallel to the front face of the house. And that, yeah. You know, that that is an aesthetic change. Right. Um, but I wouldn't be opposed to the composite materials, and I agree. I think I would agree with Jason's recommendation that. We push the homeowner to retain and just repair the existing materials on that first floor. They look like they're in pretty solid shape. I would agree. Mm -hmm. My thoughts are the width of the board, the decking. If they're going to be replacing the decking anyway, why not do a smaller width one similar to what's there now? Yeah, I'm not sure if that specific product comes in that width or, but I, I again, if there is a an option for it to be of a similar width, I think our recommendation should be they maintain a similar dimension if available. Yeah, they have to, re, they're planning to remove the old decking, buy new stuff. Why not just do a similar product? I think it will look better and be more in tune with the uh, history of the property. And last year on the North Oakland property, we had presented information about that three and a quarter inch tongue and groove composite material, which that property opted to pursue. They, they liked that um, instead of the wide six inch gapped decking. Was that other product, the tongue and groove product? Um... Yes. yes, it is. So we know that there's something similar available, or at least there was. Yeah, there was last year. There has been for many years. Um, I've seen it used on individually listed National Register designated properties. You know, the state shippos would kind of maybe prefer wood, but they they give a thumbs up to the composite decking, recognizing the maintenance issues there. Um, yeah. The thumbs up being for that narrower tongue and groove stuff. I have not seen this, you know, six inch gapped plank used on front porches. Right. I guess if I'm recalling your recommendations correctly, I I would make a motion uh, if we're done with discussion um, to follow through on 
your recommendations, Jason, with the exception of the deck board, uh, where we would look to try to uh, encourage the applicant to utilize a a uh, profile that is that resembles the existing um, more accurately. I'd like to add just a little bit before uh, Ian's point there about uh, recommendation is asking or encouraging uh, suitability of repair rather than replacement. Absolutely. Because as, as Jason uh, made clear, uh, I don't think we've been adequately uh, notified and informed about repairability. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think per your recommendations, the existing columns, rails, and ballasters have not been demonstrated to be irre uh, irreparable. Um, the proposed height creates the Cajun appearance. I agree 100%. The tongue and groove material would be better. I think uh, the new proposed rail height, again, caged in. Uh, the booster rail certainly could be an option and would encourage that if there's a concern of the height from a code perspective. Um, that's my, my, my motion is as you've proposed here. I'll second that. So on the second story, I'm sorry to interrupt. Tell me what you feel about the second story. I think the second story, ideally, it's is that an occupied space? No, the porch. It has a door, which is kind of driving this. Yeah, yeah. It's a door, and actually, the the owner of the house has been using that porch roof as a you know little planting garden without railing for for a year or two or three so so yeah it's, it's a used space and needs a rail so <laughs> it should have one right certainly a rail that matched the existing height would be or the what we understand to be the previously existing height would be a lot better than no railing at all if, if it required a booster rail from a city code perspective, I'd be okay with that, but I I would not endorse the full height without the booster rail. I agree. Agreed. Yeah. So do we need, how can we, do we have that in a motion then? I think that's already part of it because that was part of Jason's staff recommendation was the oh, upper. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So we have a motion and we have a second. Um, all those in favor for the motion say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? Oh, sorry. Anyone opposed? Is there anyone opposed? One more time. Is anyone opposed? Okay, well, the motion carries. Um, interesting. Um, item number E3, certificate of appropriateness number 23-11. A consideration with possible action on a design review for a porch replacement located at 422 Cass Street. Uh, you missed one, Ron. We're at 09. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I checked the right one, but I read the wrong one. Um, yeah, to a consideration with possible action on a design review for a new sign located at 240 North Broadway. 240 North Broadway is familiar to you there. It should be to the south corner of the intersection of Broadway Dowsman, the former Bangkok Garden, is that correct? Yep. So That's next cool. slide, you see the COA is proposing two types of signs. Up near the cornice is a channeled letter that would be illuminated. And then elsewhere in the first story, there would be some banner foundation work, you know, poles sticking out. Uh, here you see it. Next slide. Recommend approval. Um, you know, with the usual talk about how the, the screws and the bolts ought to aim for the mortar rather than the brick face. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. All those in favor? Any more discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Is anyone opposed? Is anyone opposed? Motion carries. Um, item number E3, excuse me. Now we're here. Consideration with possible action on a design review for a porch replacement located at 422 Cass Street. So 422 Cass is in the Astor District. You see two photos of it here on the right. It's a Dutch colonial revival, probably 1920-ish. Uh, next slide. You get a better view of the mid-century metal columns and railing that is present in the photograph on the top right. The sketch at left shows new columns, balusters, and railings of a type that would be, you know, aesthetically more appropriate than the mid-century modern type stuff or mid-century traditional. We did get a little bit of correspondence yesterday here that clarified a few things. Uh, the, the porch steps would be a composite tongue and groove treated wood. I, I generally don't encourage tongue and groove on steps, but the floor of the porch, yes. Um, so the railing would be vinyl. Is vinyl better than metal? Uh, you know, neither is perfect, but, but this would look pretty good. The columns would be six by six with a vinyl, you know, sheathing. And then the correspondence actually says they prefer a booster rail look rather than this caged in look. I don't know in practicality how they're proposing that, but um, you know, when I look at the architectural rendering at left, what kind of troubles me is you see the columns great, but then there's a newel post immediately adjacent to the columns, which mm -hmm. isn't great. But, you know, I look at, uh, is this a net, Arm from what's currently there? No, not really. Could be better, sure. So recommendation is approval of the replacement elements, noting that the replacements don't detract from the integrity of the property, at least not any more than the existing material. Um, again, I recommend consideration of design alternatives, namely elimination of the newels that are adjacent to the columns. And you know, I'm upbeat that the property owner as of yesterday was definitely intrigued by the booster rail design so so there's that thank you jason is this the one where he had the uh note written on there that he needs to build a ramp for his 92 year old mother as well that's what i was just wondering too and i didn't see any picture of a ramp outside the where's this ramp for, the, for inside or yeah i i was wondering too if it is that i totally missed that so yeah it's I, on a um, on that side, like on the side of the top of the application. On page two. Well, we did not receive any information about a ramp. Yeah, but that, it's, it's handwritten on the front of that. Yeah, yeah it's handwritten it? on there. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, okay. I mean, I, we, we could go ahead and approve what you approved, but then make note or we could table this and say what about the ramp in you know, the ramp design yeah. i mean or if we had something there's no approval for an exterior ramp uh we've encountered this before with uh, a ramp issue and i'd caution us as a commission about mm -hmm. uh challenging any uh ramp uh given the american with disabilities act I'm familiar with that through my work, and that is very powerful legislation. And I would uh, very much encourage us not to uh, to touch that, uh, and certainly not to dissuade them from doing anything or delay. Because I see the handwritten notes you're referring to, they talk about need to replace uh, ASAP to get the ramp in place. Uh, that's very powerful wording with some very powerful uh, laws behind it. I uh, hope that makes sense. But there's no picture and there's no, you know, on that drawing with the new railing and everything, there's no, the ramp's not in there. There's nothing else about a ramp. So I, that's why I was kind of confused by what they mean by this well, ramp. I would, I would venture to say that he, he may be coming back with the design for a ramp because this porch is actually collapsing and it's in real, real bad shape. So, I mean, the porch definitely needs to be fixed and maybe he wants to do one thing before he goes for the next. Um, but it sounds like he wants to get that porch done 
so that they can at least, you know, then go for the ramp. Um, well, I guess that's what I was going to ask is depending on our action here tonight, can staff just contact the property owner and ask them the intentions and make sure that they're coming back if they are modifying the porch in the future? Yes, I, yeah, we can. my recommendation is to approve the porch design and then we'll point out that they need a COA for the ramp. But uh, I have to agree with David, when, when we review ramps, I generally erred on the side of being very permissive recognizing that ramps tend to come and go because uh, you know the next owner may likely not need a ramp for many years and so they're, they're kind of like furniture in that sense. Now, I really appreciate the need for a ramp. I don't have a problem with that but I was just a little confused when it's on the application but then there's nothing in the picture or there's no yeah. mention of it anywhere else. I thought well what's going on here? I would say they're indecisive because it does say they need to get a lift or ramp. So it sounds like they're they're uncertain of uh, what to do. Uh, yeah. And obviously they need to get the porch done ASAP. So and given that I will make- a, a lift that would be inside the house. Um, maybe there are exterior lifts. No, there are, there are exterior lifts that are a much smaller footprint than a ramp. Uh, they're reliable, they're powerful uh, and uh, actually work very well. Hey, uh, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve recommendation as listed. Thank you. I'll second the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Is anyone opposed? Is anyone opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Um, let's see here. Item number E4, uh, Certificate of Appropriateness number 23-12. Consideration with possible action on a design review for replacement window sashes located at 702 South Monroe Avenue. 702 South Monroe is a big Italianate on a corner lot in Astor. Per the 1979-1980 National Register nomination, this was identified as a priority property, um, noting that there's no such thing as priority properties as far as the National Register is concerned. But, you know, this from that perspective was probably identified then as an individually eligible contributing property, not just part of the scenery. We're fortunate enough to have a photograph from 1978 with a 1979 stamp of that property. I want to call your attention to this black and white photograph. And if you look and you squint, you'll see that all those windows are multi-pane windows. Now, I don't know if those are multi-pane storm windows and that the real windows behind it are one over ones. That's kind of my hunch. But if you drive by today, you're not going to see multi-pane windows here. Mm -hmm. Now, on the next slide, that top color photograph in the center, you see a multi-pane storm window. My hunch is that that's mm -hmm. what was photographed in 1978, that the storm windows were multi-pane. And at some point, most of those storm windows were replaced with one over one storm windows. Now, I requested from the property owner pictures of the actual sash windows behind those storm windows taken from the interior of the house or even better photos of them from the exterior. Uh, property owner declined to respond to that request. It's a rental property, right? So maybe they didn't want to go inside and take photos. What we know from the COA application is that the owner wants to replace nine first floor windows, not the storms, but the actual windows. And in doing so, delete the storm windows. Um, this is the extent of the information I have, these photographs here. And, you know, my role to you is kind of bound by the Secretary of the Interior Standards, which says don't replace historic windows. I can't guarantee that the windows behind the storm windows shown here are historic. I don't know. I have my hunch is that they are. I note that the Landmarks Commission has taken a favorable view of replacing historic windows. So these things are what I point out on the next slide to you, that it, if they're historic, I don't know that they're historic, that replacing them does negatively impact the integrity, but you, have embraced new windows on previous properties. So, so I suspect that would be the case here. Thank you. 
Was there anything about retaining and restoring that exterior trim or replacing as need be? My concern is if they replace the windows, you know, I've seen it happen so many times, they just tear off, throw away the exterior trim, and then you hardly have, you just, you don't have that look anymore. So is there anything about that exterior trim? There was no mention specifically of the exterior window casing that trim. My presumption then is that it would be maintained. The COA did mention a lot of exterior work that would fall under the umbrella of ordinary maintenance, which you know we need not comment upon. But uh, I guess if they tore off that window casing and did something else, I'd be pretty angry because there's no mention of that here. Yeah. The, the property owner is not with us tonight, are they? I, I actually, I am here. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know when to speak. Oh, motion to open the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Go ahead, JR. Is that you? Property owner? John, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh. Sorry, I was I was talking. I apologize. Yes, my name is my name is John. I am one of the property owners of the building. My father and I actually purchased this home a couple of years ago, and we've been renovating interior apartments, restoring them um, to the, as much of the natural charm as that we could. And the exterior of the home is in badly need of uh, um, repair as well. So that's what we're going to be doing this summer. We are planning to repair, as the COA says. The extra year we're gonna get it painted the same color, match it, replace any of the wood with existing um, and replica wood. And the windows also are single panes. Some of the glass is broken, um, wooden sashes. The, uh, we would like to replace them with the one over one um, single pane, and I'm sorry, double pane windows for better efficiency. Um, as mentioned, this is a rental property. So we would like to use as durable as material as that we can so that those windows have a longer life. Um, but the, I also apologize. I heard that there was a request for interior pictures. I'm, I apologize, I didn't get that. I do have them, I'd be happy to send them. We're not trying to withhold any information from this committee. Uh, I just didn't get that email. Um, so I do apologize, I'd be happy to send the interior pictures, but they are um, not multi-pane. I don't know what you call them, but just like single, glass pieces. I apologize. I don't know my technical terms for windows. Um, yes. What other questions did the committee have? So I think we were inquiring about the exterior, the wood trim surrounding the windows and quite frankly, on the rest of the house, your intention mm -hmm. is to maintain all of that and just repair and repaint it? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Yes, we are. These are interior sashes. So we are just going to remove the window and the wood around it and replace it our, our request is for vinyl for its durability um but from the exterior uh, it also it also was mentioned that the storms would be removed if that's allowed it would be easier we're having trouble finding storm windows to fit manufacturers are making them less and less it's not very common now um so if you have recommendations for replacing those storm windows that we're open to it but we're just struggling to find replicas or replacements even of anything besides the, the you know, the cheap over the top aluminum storm windows. Um, so we were, yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure it's appropriate for us to be recommending businesses, but as a historical reference, there's a company called Adams Millwork out of Iowa that does historic storm windows. Okay, yeah, I, if you guys would be able to email it to me, I'd be happy to, we would be happy to look into that. Um, but as for the windows, yes, the, the trim of the window will be left alone. It is just the glass and the sash that would be replaced with these nine first floor windows. I guess uh, just one additional question. The size of the window openings and everything as they are currently, the windows are going to be dimensionally similar? Yes, sir. There are, yep, no structural change to the window, just replacing single pane glass with double pane glass. Yep. Yeah, I just don't want to see like we see some schools sometimes where there was used to be large yeah. window openings and 
little teeny tiny windows now placed in them. That's yeah, like yeah. now the size. Right. Um, and I presume that that was the case, but if I didn't ask, um, I know. It's a very fair question. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to share. I am encouraged by John's response about the exterior. I share yeah. uh, what I inferred from Susan's thoughts about the exterior sash that those really are very character defining. Uh, and given that, if those, given that those are going to remain intact, that's very encouraging. And uh, I would support uh, the replacement as proposed. Yeah, it's a beautiful property. And if you can maintain that character that it has and its uniqueness, you know, I, more power to you, I think. Yep, bring it back to life. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> You'll yeah. have something very saleable and very appropriate for the neighborhood. It, it is a very beautiful home, and unfortunately, it has fallen in disrepair over the years, but uh, hopefully we can give it a, a little life. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, John. Do we have a motion now to close the floor? I'll make oh, that. Can motion. I just make one comment? Oh, yep, just sure. jumping back to about the storm windows, if they're installing dual pane windows, would they really necessarily need storm windows? You know, if you're like, in Alaska, maybe you want three layers or something, but I'm just thinking I replace a lot of my windows and mm -hmm. I just, I have the dual pane. I don't have um, storm windows. Just an idea. If, <laughs> if we're able to replace them with dual pane windows, but maintain the exterior shape and uh, of the window, I, I guess that would be our preference. A lot of the storm windows are also rotting and deteriorated. Mm -hmm. There uh -huh. does need to be something done. Um, so I guess our preference would be to replace them with double pane windows and not do the exterior storm window. Um, but yeah. I think we're at the, the mercy of the committee here for that decision. I, I don't recall us ever requiring someone to replace the storm windows with original when they're going from single pane right. to dual pane. Right. Because you're getting that energy efficiency with a dual pane. I guess if you're looking for my input, I, I would recommend not bothering with storm windows if they replace the windows with modern double panes. Right. Yeah. That's no, my thought. No practical purpose there. Yeah. yeah. I think, well, then, you know, as long as you're retaining that exterior trim and you're retaining the original size of the window, you're really accomplishing a lot as far as maintaining that original appearance. And the distinctive features, I concur. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'd make a motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Thank you. You. Okay, the floor is closed. Um, any other motions going forward? I'd make a motion to approve the certificate. Second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I guess just one point of clarification, Paul, your recommendation yeah. is to approve based on uh, Jason's recommendations, right? That was my concern too, that it's retaining the exterior trim and yeah. Very similar size window. I, I guess I think that's what we heard tonight. So that's what my motion was. Yep. <laughs> I just want to clarify that. I, I felt the same way. Okay. So all, all those in favor were our eyes. Uh, anyone yeah. opposed? Okay. Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, item number E5 Certificate of Appropriateness 23 14. Consideration with possible action on a design review for a new garage, stucco work, new porch, and new windows located at 1137 South Monroe Avenue. Okay, well, this one's going to take a little longer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here we're talking, again, 1137 South Monroe. So I've drawn an arrow to that. Notice it's got a big setback from the street. I've got a photograph of it on the right. And by the way, tangentially, we're also going to be talking a little bit about 1133. It's the neighboring house to the north. 
you'll see that it does not have a big setback and it's a larger house and the property owner and applicant owns both of these houses but specific to 1137 i'll try to keep it focused there uh next slide this is from this is a sanborn map view and you see 1137 it's a paste in to the 1936 sanborn map i've done a lot of research on the house i can tell you it's older than 1950 and it's newer than 1936 so the people that wrote the nomination maybe didn't quite have it right when they said 1920s but there you see it and it's probably at this point when it was first pasted in in the 1940s or late 30s here's to have a one car garage attached now just for reference you look at 1133 to the north you see the footprint of that house you look over on the aerial picture to the left here, you see it's got a much bigger footprint just to the upside of the green arrow on the picture on the left. So that house has been altered a lot. Okay, fine, let's move on. <laughs> and here we have a relatively recent picture of 1137 South Monroe. Now you see, instead of a one car attached garage, it's a two car attached garage. Fine. My hunch is that they added a bay at some point, some point prior to the National Register nomination in 1979. I want to call your attention to the door to the house. It's got steps. There's three windows, three glass block windows. Okay, fine. Um, let's kind of get into it a little more. Oh, hey, the neighboring house, just for reference. The photograph at top left is the neighboring house in 1990. We have historical records in the city of a permit issued in 1994 that involved a very drastic altering of the front of that house. So again, the photograph top left, 1990, you see the pergola type porch patio thing. The owner has said that they're going to build that pergola patio onto the front of 1137, the neighboring house. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I would say it's not really that. Just for reference, 1133 South Monroe today is very much, instead of this craftsman style that you see at the top left, it's become what preservation would define as contemporary, maybe ranch style. It's completely altered. And that was all done after the National Register nomination to the district. So, again, top left photo, the more or less historic view of 1137 South Monroe. At the bottom on the left, you see a photograph of work in process that I took when we issued a stop work order. And we're talking about four discrete things here tonight, the garage, the windows, the porch or pergola, and a fence or wall. So we can move to the next slide. For the garage, on the left, you see an architectural you know, floor plan of what the previous garage was. So, so it's that two car garage with individual bays. And I've drawn some orange lines across from that was sketch to the garage that's in process. And those orange lines show you that the back of the garage is still where the back of the garage was. And it shows you, this is all after I wrote the recommendation, that the front of the garage is now moved closer to the street. It's a bigger garage. And it's also a taller garage. And, you know, to, to avoid any suspense, I'm not really all that concerned about the new garage. Um, yeah, it's bigger. Yeah, it's different. But we know things have been changing here. We also know that the old garage was weather damaged either through lack of maintenance or something happened, it, it needed attention. So things are changing on the garage. Next slide. Again, with some orange lines at the top, I just wanna show you that I've lined up the photographs where that top corner of the house on the left lines up with that top corner on the house on the right and the door base on the left, more or less lining up with the door base on the right. And I do that just to illustrate to you that the garage in process is taller. 
you can see that pretty clearly. It's got a single two car width door instead of a pair of single car width doors in two bays. So, so this, you know, absorb this holistically. This is what the proposed garage is. It's bigger and different. Okay, moving on. Windows. This was not part of the COA application, but rather was noted after the fact. At the top left, you see how the building had been with three glass block windows. Back when I did my character defining features list for this house, I said that those glass block windows were probably character defining windows. They were probably historic or had become historic in their own right. In the bottom left photograph, you see that the glass block has been removed. We've got new single pane windows inserted. The third window from the street, the, the back post window has been deleted and some sort of window casing element has been added, which alters the character of the house. Um, and you know me, I'm, I, get, I get animated about altering the fenestration of things. So that has apparently happened here where a window, one of the fenestration openings has been deleted or is in process of being deleted. And the window casing is pushing the style of the house in a different direction from the, the historic international style that the house was believed to have had. Next slide, this porch or portico element, the property owner has stated that this is a copy of what had been present at the neighboring house to the north. And that is very troubling from the Secretary of the Interior Standards perspective. So we have a few architectural renderings here where you see that the front facade, the primary character defining appearance of the house is proposed to be altered more or less in its entirety by the addition of this pergola thing on the front, this porch. Now at the far right, you see that the, you know, single unit steps to the front door are more or less remaining as such. The proposal just calls for adding this covering. So the porch is an issue. Um, yeah, it's a bigger issue than the windows, I'd be saying. And a much bigger issue than the garage. So moving forward, here again, the picture of the neighboring house from 1990. The post-it note from the property owner saying, photo of pergola will look like, will be the same as the one at 1133, which is what's shown in the photo. Here on the far right, this pergola, you see an architectural drawing. It calls for some very robust piers to support some very robust columns and some sort of roof pergola. I think it's entirely covered. Yeah, you know, this, this, you're seeing what I've seen. So this is what I know. Uh, moving forward, another slide. Moving on from that pergola thing, there's also this wall that's called for this fence. This wall, a substantial wall, is to connect the neighboring 1133 South Monroe to the north to the front facade of 1137 South Monroe. Um, my concern is that the visual impact here appears to be designed to unify the two houses into a single larger entity, all of the same new 1994-ish contemporary style. And that, from the Secretary of the Interior's perspective, is a problem. Um, you know, as far as this wall is concerned, to avoid that unification look, it really ought to attach to the north side of 1137 South Monroe rather than to the front facade of 1137 South Monroe. So next slide, where are we at? Here you see some architectural renderings of what that wall is going to look like. Again, my concern, my take as I walk by is that it, it unifies the two houses as does the new pergola patio it effectively makes 1137, the smaller house, look like a, an annex of 1133. 
So moving on, I want to point out Secretary of the Interior standards. I'm just looking at those top 10 high level things. So on number two, the underlined part, Secretary of the Interior says you should not alter features and spaces that characterize a property. Well, the, the new porch and that new fence wall feel to me as though they are a significant alteration of the spaces that characterize 1137 South Monroe. Number three, underlined part, adding conjectural features or elements from other historic properties will not be undertaken. So again, in the applicant's own words, the new porch is by by their definition a, a element from a different historic property that they're adding to this one so as to unify the two. That that's a big issue. Number four, I don't know that those glass block windows were original. I don't have a historic photo, but at the time of the National Register nomination in 1980, they had presumably acquired historic significance in their own right and should be retained and preserved. Um, number five, kind of a generic blanket statement that can apply to lots of things, you know, distinctive features, finishes, and construction techniques that characterize a property shall be preserved. Okay, I don't know that we're doing that here. Number six, the underlined part, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities and where possible materials. That's not what's been done with the garage. Okay, well, maybe that's okay. As far as the front porch is concerned, of course, there was no old feature. The new feature is entirely conjectural. Number nine, new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size scale and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property. I'm most concerned with the proposed porch. I feel as though that does not, that it is not compatible with the architectural features of this property. It's eminently compatible with the features of the neighboring house to the north. But here, again, professional opinion, if you will, I don't think so. Number 10, new additions should be removable, and if removable, it wouldn't impact the historic property. I don't know that the new porch, fence, or garage, for that matter, are really truly removable. They may be irreversible changes once completed, but I don't know. So staff recommendation effectively is to deny the porch on the grounds that it's a conjectural feature. And I would refer you to the Secretary of Interior Standards, numbers two, three, five, and nine. I recommend denying the wall. It would be better situated on the side, the north facade of 1137, rather than the front facade, where it becomes a, a character-defining element, one that's new and conjectural, and because of its location, effectively unifies the two houses. The garage, I feel, is you know, like it or not, it is largely complete. I don't think it detracts terribly from what had been there previously. If it was proposed to me and not yet there, I would encourage you to debate its merits. And by all means, you can debate the merits of what they proposed, but, but a lot of it's there already. And again, I, I want to really harp on this bit about altering features and spaces that characterize a property, I feel that that's what we're doing with the porch and the fence, and of course the windows, but the windows didn't come to me until after I'd written this. So um, yeah, I'm recommending against the porch, I'm recommending against the wall, I'm swallowing the garage, and we should talk about the windows. Thank you. Jason, question for you, if you could walk through a timeline uh, based on a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned a stop work order. So I'm presuming that work had begun and that the COA was retroactive. Uh, is that correct? If not, uh, what is the actual timeline? You want me to try it? I think that. Stephanie knows best. 
Um, so we had received the COA application on the same day that Jason went out and saw that the work had already started. So we had the inspection team go out and do the stock work order on the same day. That must have been two or three weeks ago. Um, additionally, though, there was a permit issued for parts of this work. So this came to our inspection division as an interior only um, permit, building permit. They were doing interior work. The inspector gave them the permit for that. They came back after and added the garage on. Since it was an amendment to an existing permit, it doesn't give them the same notification as it does in our system that it's a historic house. But it went so, from now on. Yes, we did just have a meeting and we fixed that. So now amended permits also get the same prompt that, hey, this is historic, have you talked to Steph? Um, so it is on our heads that that permit did get issued for the garage work. Um, it, however, did not include the porch work, the fence, the windows, or there is also a staff level uh, rear fence, like a regular property fence. That's part of that. None of that was included in that permitted work. So there was a permit issued for interior work and the garage work. Um, and again, we've already met and have fixed the problem in our software that would now show for an amended permit. My so, is it accurate to say that much of that works, in particular, the windows uh, were done before the uh, COA was approved? COA hasn't been approved. Um, I'm, I'm, even before it was submitted, the work was done. Uh, and the work is that, a, that's better description. Thank you. That work is not complete. The, the third window, the, the backmost window from the street, that hasn't yet been stuck out over as far as I can tell. That's been removed and board it over, I, I think. Again, I don't sneak up on properties to get a true read on all these things, but, but and to add to the timeline too, Stephanie sent out an annual reminder letter to all property owners of historic buildings saying, hey, annual reminder time, if you're doing exterior changes to your property, you need to fill out a COA. As I understand it, the property owner received this and then thought, oh, I should probably submit a COA for all the work that I'm just now starting. So it's, you know, timeline wise, it seems to be a, there's a nexus that everything happened at once, that work started perhaps the day they filled out the COA application. I don't know. It was tight. And that's tight too with when the letters went out and were received by the property owners. Again, that being an annual reminder, they would have had one last year. Um, I think, anyway, I'm looking at you, Steph. I'm yes. just like, <laughs> give me the eye or anything. Uh, so, you know, timeline's a little odd. We received that COA application. I thought, oh, gee, that's a lot of stuff. I should go take a look. And in doing so, I noted work in progress. I called up Stephanie and said, we need to issue a stop work order. This was some days before any other correspondence came in from anybody saying, ooh, did we get a COA on this? You know, we. We at least were on top of it when we received the COA application. I went to take a look. So, my my two cents is if indeed the permit was issued for the work that was identified and that work had started, I think retroactively going back and having the owner um, <coughs> remove that work um, i i'm not sure that i can i can stand behind that um the if, was just issued for the garage just to be clear correct for that portion of the work i realize there are other pieces that were not part of that inadvertently approved um, scope of work. But as far as what was approved, um, I'm not sure legally where we stand on that, but um, do you have any commentary on that? My recommendation is to approve the garage. And that is my way of avoiding having to make any legal speculations on this. It's an unfortunate situation. But, you know, the garage being as what they're building, not really a terrible garage, right? 
Yeah, yeah, and I I totally agree with you. And I have I have zero appetite uh, for making someone undo something that we gave them the green light to do, um, which makes me wonder if we ought to take these recommendations up individually and and vote on them individually, uh, just so that you can easily separate them. I was thinking the same thing. That would be great on my end. Stephanie. Oh, we do have an applicant here also in the room if you're interested in hearing. I'll make a motion to open the floor to hear the applicant. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, I'm going to post opening the floor. Okay, the floor is now open. Like, uh, can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> okay. The application was made in October of last year. It was granted the uh, landscape feature that is connected that is there that it isn't connected to 1137 it's just strictly a landscape feature and that was on the plan the uh, the garage itself see this house maybe there was something in 24 because if you look at the foundation there's a foundation and then it was added when later on they stacked blocks up and they put some kind of a house on top of it. So I think at some point, whatever that place was, it exited that grade and now it's up higher. Um, that's neither here nor there. Um, the, the thing is, the garage that was on the house didn't have a frost wall. And so at some point before I owned it, somebody decided to expand the kitchen a little bit and they pushed it into the garage, laid it on the slab. So it started to pull the stucco away, okay? One of the questions that Stephanie had was the, which I laid out in the application, was the stucco, we're just replacing the stucco with stucco, but you can either patch it or you scrim the whole house. I'd other add, I'd also add in October, if I wouldn't have been granted the building permit, which are showed two windows then, I would have, I would have tore the house down. That's how bad it was. The, the bat, the tub was, well, it took me a year and a half to ask my friends to leave the house who were renting it for 18 years because I was afraid the bathtub was going to go through the floor. There was water in the basement all the time. I mean, the house, if you go in that house right now, the woodwork in that house right now is 1930-something, okay? And that had them all be custom built, right down to the doorknobs. In. So it isn't like you're trying to do something else. If you want me to take the pergola off, I. I could walk around my block in my neighborhood and show you pergolas on all kinds of houses. And they're just landscape features. I mean, what you're trying to just do is you got a structural line in one place, or I could do this. If it would, if it would solve the problem, I'll, I'll go to the clerk and get a piece of paper out and make it one piece of property. Just call it 1133. I don't know if that helps. But I'm not trying to uh, destroy the image of the neighborhood. The other house destroyed the image of the neighborhood. But uh, so I think, you know, from my standpoint, when the city, when I got the building permit, I mean, and as you said, and I, I agree, as you lay it out, yeah, it's, it's, it's different, you know. But I certainly never considered that thing a historical piece of property. I mean, that, that was a, that was a, that somebody should have put the sticker on and say nobody could live in that house. And that's the different case today. But that's, here's where we are. So let's turn it over to good judgment and let's see what we want to do. Got a, uh... Important question for the applicant. You mentioned uh, putting application in in October. Did uh, this application include all the work we're discussing 
the it, garage windows. It, yeah, it, it was a, you have a plan. There's a there's a set of blueprints that I submitted, and the only revision I've made to that, when and which I dropped off at the city because they asked me for a revision, is the pergola. I don't think there's another revision. Staff, your uh, your observations on that point that uh, the October application included uh, everything but the pergola? It did not. Um, the garage was on there, and then the windows were not. That still is not part of that application. Um, the building permit applications, you have to not only write out what you're doing, but then you attach, obviously, the building plans to it or any sort of site plan or layout plan that you have. The windows were not part of that. Um, there could have been something with that front fence because they wouldn't have called it a fence. It would not have triggered getting that fence permit. Um, I did not see this substantial of a structure on that first submission for the building permit. The only thing that was noted on there was the garage work. Well, excuse me. Did you did it, did you look at the blueprints that were submitted with that? Yes. And you don't see that on there. The window replacement, the fence, the, the windows, porch. The window. The fence, I'm not talking about a fence. Now the fence was 90, we had a permit 90 to something for a fence. It failed and we, and I've sent to send you more information on that. It's the one that shows the two garages side by side with the sketch drawn at 35. So, yeah, the in process shows the windows still there. It shows two windows still there. Well, no, the full this view shows off. three windows. Those are the two aftmost windows in my apartments. So there's a third window that's been cut off here from the little picture. Oh. Is it down here? Yes. Yeah. And this is showing that we're taking it out. Where is it? Yeah, we're going to stuck with it. That doesn't show that or say well, that. I, I, well, uh, it's okay. I mean, um, it's, it's okay. The glass block, I don't think, was, I know it was available in the 30s, but I think this whole thing was redone by Jim Meyer from Krieger Jewelers when he lived there and I bought the house from him. And I don't know what year he and his partner remodeled that house. And it was before, it was, I moved in there in 1980. Well, the first house I bought in 80 some, and that was a disaster. So the picture you showed was actually remodeled house. Okay. I can show you the pictures of what I bought. That'd be helpful. Oh, sure. I got it. There you go. I don't have a photo album of no, no, you, book, so. <laughs> you sure don't. Okay. Well, that's the front of the house. Here's the basement. Oh, do you have Here's exterior? It. I'm trying to find that. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. No, the exterior is as I showed you. Oh, okay. That was just painted, sure. tricked. Okay. And then the thing replaced. So that that is the way it was. And then in 90, when I got married, in '92, I said, "Amy, go find a go find us a house because this was a thousand square foot little place." And she said, "I like living here." I said, "Then find an architect," and she did. And that was for eleven thirty three. That's eleven thirty three. Sure. All right. So when this one came along, I bought it because we were sharing a side yard, and I wasn't sure the next person would be that comfortable with me doing the side yard. So I bought the house from Jim. And 18 years later, or 16 years later, I had to ask my friends, I said, you have to leave. This house isn't safe. 
and then took I would, I would like to interject here. Sir, sir, I did not catch your name if you introduced yourself. My name is John, my name is John Herkman. I live at 1133 South Monroe Avenue. All right, John, what I consider very concerning is there's a conflict in uh, positions that uh, you're saying the plans in October included what we're discussing, but staff is saying that it is not. Uh, well, I am in the opinion now of rejecting the COA, but what I would recommend is that if you do have the paperwork that shows you did apply for this, is that you can represent uh, to demonstrate it. Uh, as some of the other commission members mentioned before, uh, the garage, if permission was given, it would be, my words, heavy handed for us to, uh, to change that. But the other issues, the window, the wall, or that fence, the, uh, the porch, uh, if permission had been granted, uh, that's one thing. But at this point, we're not seeing that in front of us. Does that make sense? Well, everything makes sense except that I got can't do any work on the house. The guy wants to start the stucco on Monday, and you know I, the reason I held them off last fall is because the color I want the color to be the same for the whole thing. In order to match the color, he's going to scrim the house. So, yeah, I got I got now if you if if it if it's this pergola that's on the porch that bothers her. I'll just go and rip it off. I'm gonna just destroy it and get it out of there. You know, I just wanna finish this thing. I want it behind me, okay? It's well, sir, your, sir, your permit, your your position was that you had included in particular the windows in uh, the October application. Well, it was, I don't have my plan here, so I can't, I don't, you know, I don't wanna say, call Stephanie, you know, I, I don't have it here in front of me, but I, I sure uh, it was WeWorks that did the design or the work. And I'm, I'm, I just took the plan that he, that we had, and I took it over there. And then later, then I added the interior because originally I didn't have the interior and then the building inspection, I think, as I recall, now this October, they came over and they said, you, you know, no, you gotta, you gotta have this whole interior. We gotta see the interior. And that's, so then we redid the interior because originally I didn't plan on doing much with the interior until we got into it. And I found that the, the floors were rotten and it, it, something well, we need to we need to stay focused on the exterior because the exterior. that's that that's, that's the lane of this I commission agree. I agree is my question for you is do you have the paperwork demonstrating that no. uh, the city granted permission for the windows the porch and the rail I do not have that with me I, I well do you have it a, do you have it at all oh I would I would assume so I've got a, I've got blueprints I mean, the city should have record of what was submitted and when. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't. Stephanie says, she yeah, in print. Yeah, the city would have that documentation. My two cents is there if no we need, if that the the timeline on this is so critical. Yeah. Um, and if indeed those plans did have this information on it then that's going to sway my vote. And if we need to do this between now and Monday and call a special meeting, I have no issue doing that as long as we give whatever notices we need. Um, because there's not enough clarity here in my mind to make a, a rational judgment and either penalize the homeowner or... I understand from Jason and Stephanie's perspective, the issues at hand, I, I don't disagree. But if the permit was issued, this is a completely different ball game. Well, the permit was issued. It was issued in October. The permit was issued, whatever for, okay, in October, all right? So, uh, but, you know, the one issue we can resolve that I can tell you point blank wasn't on the plan. The pergola for the poor front porch was not on it. 
Yep. That was a revision, and that was presented before I applied for the, the certificate. Mm -hmm. That was, and so that it was a revision. I applied, I took us another set of plans down here because that actually showed the foundations for the pergola. The pergola was actually drawn in by the landscape architect. That's who drew that in. And then he was just trying to find a structural line from one property to the next, as you know, which everybody, nobody wants to do, but that's what he was doing. So it was just a landscape feature. So we can resolve one thing right now. <laughs> if the pergola can't go on, then I'd rather know that tonight because it's already, you know, it's another $8,000 just to, just to stucco the thing. So right. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to rip it out. And whatever money I spent so far, that'll just be gone. I don't care. And then just to, just, again, this you was, mentioned Monday with the stucco work. Were they going to be doing the garage? Everything. They're going to do the house, period. The whole and the house. house. Could yeah. they just they start with a garage on Monday if we need no, they are going to start. for you to provide your documentation? Oh, I think what we're saying, excuse me, but I think what we're saying now, if the pergola is not on the house, then we then you got an issue with a window. So I'm just trying to get it to a point where that, where I can finish this thing. Yep. If you don't want the pergola, I'm gonna throw it away because I, I don't care anymore. Again, to note, this is from that original blueprint. It's showing the window and there's no notes, no anything indicating that this was going to be covered. Frankly, Mr. Herkman, that's probably the biggest issue in my mind is the windows. The fact that uh, what Stephanie just showed uh, indicates no, no indication that those windows were going to be removed and changed. Uh, my understanding is your position is that was approved. Well, that's really kind of the crux of this situation is you, you're stating it was uh, approved. And I understand you didn't need to bring it here. But frankly, you didn't know to bring it here. But frankly, if that was not included in the original plans and you can't demonstrate it, it's going to be my position that it's directed that it be restored to what it was before. Uh, this commission and myself in particular take a very poor view on people that do things without permission. And uh, uh, particularly when it does harm to the historic integrity of the structure, such as I think Jason very well established. So in my opinion, the windows, the windows are the big deal. Jason, what Jason established was that there were glass block windows in those openings. But we haven't established that that's the way it was in the original building. So that just, but that's okay. I mean, but I would like to return to the pergola because that's the biggest, that is the biggest stopper right now in this whole thing. So if, if you don't want the pergola, can't you just break it down here and. Yep. I, I would tend to agree with Jason that the pergola as presented is really not compatible with what's being proposed. And John, if you are willing to consider taking that down and removing it from the thing, as you've mentioned, I think that's very honorable of you. And, and I think it would make the rest of this process a lot easier. Now, I would, I, I'd be happy to come over to City Hall and look at those plans as they were submitted and see for myself if, if that window is in there or not, or whatever they are. Um, because I think we have to be super clear about what was on the document. And you already indicated the pergola wasn't. And so that's good. Uh, but I don't want to mistreat you as the owner if indeed that was on there. Well, I was not. So it, it, it's no, fine. not the pergola, but the other pieces. 
Oh, well, uh, Stephanie just left, so maybe she's going to try to find those drawings. I don't know where she was. But... Well, Ian, even kind of separating that, the, the, taking the window piece in particular, right? Let, separate whether it was on the permit or not. I think uh, it, it's really about, let's say they weren't on the permit. He's still requesting a COA to be able to put those windows in. And, and if this body were to grant that, that COA, uh, the windows would be permitted to be put in, right? Unless I'm missing something. Now, Jason had said that he thought the block was historic, but I haven't heard a definitive confirmation if in fact they are. So do we, do we know with certainty that those are historic to the property? No, we don't. I don't have a photograph of the house in a, in a pre-1980 condition. What I can say is that the house was identified as being of the international style of architecture. And in that sense, it would be relatively common to have used an element like glass block in this streamlined sort of architectural style. So circumstantially, it would stand to reason that the glass block was probably historic or had taken on a historic nature in its own right since it was put in at unknown time. Um, either way, it would have been appropriate to the style of architecture. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you, though, that I would hit the map hard and die for those windows. I don't know that I would. Um, and, you know, take into consideration, too, that this house has a very large setback from the road. I zoomed in to get my photographs. Yeah. Those windows truly character defining features of the house. I thought they were when I wrote my list in 2015. 2015 sorry, I ran out of breath from that cancer surgery. Um, but uh, that's an opinion. I can't say for fact that, hey, I'm holding a photograph from 1942 that shows that glass was there. I, I don't have that. I'd concur with you, Jason, that it is typical of the international style to have that glass block, it, that, that you're absolutely correct, that is consistent. So the likelihood is, as you said, that it was part of the picture at that point. But that's where I wonder, Ian, if, if almost the, to look at this process a little bit differently, if the first question is, would we grant the COA? If yes, then whether it was included on the, the, the building permit request or not is irrelevant. If no, well, then you go back to the building permit and, and see if, in fact, that was granted. Mm -hmm. So where does, this, where does this leave us, Bob? <clears throat> well, I think I, I would suggest that unless we have additional questions or... Uh, you know, for the applicant or if the applicant uh, has more to share, do it now. But I think we ought to close the floor at some point because we're kind of debating yeah. with the floor open, which is fine. But then I think right. then I, I personally, I would recommend we go back to maybe addressing these points one at a time. Okay. Just ask your grace to allow Stephanie a few more moments to see what she's going to see. I guess she's left the room, as you can probably see. <laughs> Sure. In the spirit of that, Jason, maybe if I would just make, a, again, a recommendation without knowing how long uh, it's going to take Stephanie yet, could we just kind of hold this item for a moment and then maybe take up the next agenda item that might be a little more uh, that we could quickly dispense of? Well, that would presume that I know how to drive the computer. <laughs> Just then, to be do efficient. we have to make a motion to table this item and move on to the next? Well, first thing I would do is make table a motion to until close the floor. Stephanie comes oh. back. She's here. Oh, oh, she's back. Good. Okay. <laughs> I was about to click things. Oh, please don't. <laughs> uh -huh. All three windows are shown intact on this building application and on the plans. I don't know how to show you all, but I'm hoping you can oh, well, I'll stand up and press. I will concur if I just let me see and then if I can um, they are. Thank you. Yeah, they are. 
So you're saying that they're all they're they're all intact on that picture? All three windows, yes. It shows. Okay, well then, well then I'll with the, if there's nothing else from the homeowner, I will make a motion to close the floor. Second that. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the floor is now closed. Um. So, well, I guess is well. I think we all agree the garage is fine. The pergola is not, and then there's a the question of the window to so the porch. Uh, as driving by there, it looked to me like the porch is almost complete. I have a suggestion before to do these one at a time as separate motions. I think that's a real good idea. So I will make a, a motion to approve the garage portion of the COA. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Is anyone opposed? Is I'm anyone standing. opposed? Oh yeah, you're you're not you're not voting, right? Right. You yeah. Understand. You're abstaining. Okay, and Paul's abstaining. Um, okay, motion carries. Um, any motion number two? Make a motion to disapprove the COA for the pergola only. I'll second that motion. Having a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Nay. You, you're, you, you're opposed to the removal of the pergola? Yes. Okay, just wanna clarify. And then uh, Paul is abstaining. So it, that would be a four to one vote. So the motion carries. Yep. Um, then we have the porch. The porch is the pergola. Oh, the porch is a per okay, fair enough. And then what, the windows is the remaining issue, right? Windows and then that front fence wall thing. Well, I, I have a question with that. The front fence wall thing, that's not is it's not attached to the house, is it? It's not, it's not Stephanie. I thought it was. No, because it's it's attached to the coach on on eleven thirty three, but not on eleven thirty seven. It's attached to the structure. That is not up for the COA, not attached to right. That's 1133. Correct. That's correct. So is there a gap between it and the front of 1137 now? Or? Yes. Yeah, it's a it's a box. Mm -hmm. All right, Ron, so, I'll, I'll I'll make a motion on the windows. And I, I don't know if I'll be in the majority, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna make a motion to grant the COA for the windows. I'll I'll second that motion since they're already complete. Uh, Actually, I'd sorry, like but... a discussion on that one. I will disagree with this. Uh, I concur with Jason. Those are character defining. I am convinced that the glass block uh, was original. Uh, the arguments are compelling. I think this is uh, very much an inappropriate change to this structure. And uh, uh, certainly before the work was done, I would have uh, disapproved that. And I will be disapproving it now. I agree. Well, we have a motion and we have a second, so let's take a vote. Um, all those in favor of leaving the windows. That was, that was your motion, correct, Randy? Randy? Uh, well, right, it'd be grant the COA, which would in turn basically leave right. the windows. Yeah. And I seconded the motion. So all in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. No. Nay. Well, we have, and Paul is abstaining, so we have three nays and only two yays. So the COA portion for the windows is not granted and what does that leave us folks my other computer's not working so i think that would still technically be an active item you need to you need some type of motion on, on uh, what's that well, i guess someone could make a motion to deny it make that if i mean but you need i mean it's not a, an affirmative action item the windows to be to replace them right because you still because my motion was denied which means the COA request is still technically in front of us to, to act on in some capacity. Right. I think I see where you're going, Brian. Uh, I'll take that one. I'll make a, a motion to direct that the, the windows be restored in terms of both uh, numbers, shape, as well as material, specifically the glass blocks. And do we have a second? A second. 
Okay, having a motion and having a second to restore the windows. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. And Paul is abstaining, so it's three to two vote to restore. Okay, and I think that covers all the issues on this topic, correct? Well, do we, no, we still have to take up the fence wall. The wall still on there? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I guess oh, yeah. We're, so, is the fence not a staff reviewable item if we're defining it as a fence? If it's a fence that is not attached to the structure, we can approve it at a staff level. We were under the impression this was attached to. Right. So I'll make, I'll make a motion incorporating that, that uh, we approve the COA for the fence, provided that uh, staff confirms it is a fence with a gap between both structures. Second that. All those aye. in favor? Well, yeah. all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Ian? I'm not sure that I understand that it's disconnected from both ends. You know, I think you're right. I think it is connected to 1133, but not 1137. But we're talking about 1137 in this meeting, are we not? Yes. Yeah, but just saying that. It is okay. Connected. Well, uh, all right, before the vote here, I mean, I guess my question was that if it's not touching the building, does it really, are we really concerned about it? Is that something that we would take up as a commission? I think if it's defined as a fence, it's a staff level appro approvable or deniable item. I, I, th I think that you're correct. Stephanie, do you know that or Jason? It is. I would say since there is still a question mark, since we were reading it as attached, it appears maybe it isn't attached. I'm okay if it's approved at landmarks level with that caveat of if it's detached, staff can take care of it because there are other items on this COA that yes. as well. Okay. Either would be appropriate. So Brian, do you want to amend your... It was actually my motion. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, David. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I'd just say let's let's uh, approve it, provided staff confirms there is a gap between both buildings, and uh, hence it's actually a fence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah, I did. I did a second on that. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. There's no opposition, and Paul abstain. Um, motion carries. All right, I think we've covered all those areas, correct? Yes. Okay. I, well, thank you, I, folks. I just want to interject. I'm glad to hear that we, at, at staff level, that the process around the COA and building permit is resolved. Um, we've had a number of these issues and it, really only sets to complicate the work that we're doing. And so I appreciate the fact that um, it's already been addressed and taken care of. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you for that. Um, item number E7, COA 23-18, consideration with possible action on a design review for a mural located at 423 Dowsman Street. 423 Dousman is in the Broadway Dousman district. It's the former exclusive, the exclusive company. Here you see the picture at the top left shows an older view of the building with a sign mounted to the facade for the exclusive company. At top right, you see probably some dirt on the brick where that exclusive company sign used to be. You see the text in that photograph says a 12 foot tall by 16 foot wide mural, which is probably bigger than the red box shown on the brick, but uh, you get the idea there. And the COA says that uh, this mural will be painted onto dye bond panels that will be attached to the brick at the mortar joints. In effect, the mural will be a new sign on the side of the building and I treat it as such. So the staff recommendation is approval, noting that uh, screws are to be attached via mortar joints and the historic brick will be largely unharmed. Thank you. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Ron, I see the record to show I'm abstaining. Okay. Oh, sure. And uh, and Brian is abstaining. And uh, and no one's opposed. Okay, the motion carries. Um, item number E8, COA 23-19, consideration with possible action on design review for a new mural located at 313 North Broadway. 313 North Broadway is a non-contributing building in the Broadway Dowsman Historic District. You would recognize it as the uh, she lover. sushi lover building. The proposed mural location is on the back, the alley side. Uh, I believe it's cinder block construction, but I haven't been there myself. Photograph provided in the application shows that this back wall has been painted previously. Staff recommendation is to approve it. Okay. Same deal, Ron. I need to abstain on this one as well. Okay. Is the intent that the entire wall be the mural? Yes. What's that? A full design, but it would be for the entire wall that they would get approval for. Okay. We have a motion. motion I'll make a motion approve. to approve. I'll second. We have a motion to approve, and we have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, no opposition. And let them know that Brian is abstaining. Um, okay, so the motion carries. Item number nine, COA 23-21, consideration with possible action on a design review for a new porch located at 149 North Oakland. Oh, Jason. I don't mean to call you out. We do have the property owner here. <laughs> She's been diligently waiting. So. She came in with such enthusiasm about how, how exciting it was going to be here at this meeting. And, and I've been watching as she's slowly been crushed during the course of the meeting. But uh, this is a, a big house in the, uh, in the what's the name of this one? Open Dousman Historic District, the Blesh home. There you see it. Mm -hmm. Hey, so the front porch currently has these wide six inch deck boards. COA calls for the replacement of these non-historic porch boards with new composite deck boards, basically identical to what's currently there, just better. Um, my general rule in proposing things to you is that if it's the equal of what's there, then let's do it. If it's even better, then all better. <laughs> this is certainly the equal of what's there. Um, could maybe be better with tongue and groove because that's probably what used to be there, but, but I, I wouldn't insist upon it. That's my recommendation. Thank you. Property owner want to speak? I assume it's Emma. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Emma. I don't make really a motion to open the floor if she wishes to speak. Second. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Go ahead, Emma. I guess I'll just say I super respect the work that you guys are doing after sitting through this meeting. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have much to say. I just want to fix my porch so it looks better and is more durable. That's it. It's a beautiful home. Very, very beautiful home. Um, I'll, do we have a motion? And I'll make a motion to close the floor. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone opposed to closing the floor? Uh, do, we have, do, we, do we have a, a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion I just, to approve and a second. All those in favor say aye. Can we have some discussion? Aye. Oh, yes, Sorry. sir. Could you go back to that slide? Uh, uh stephanie where it shows the like i just want to note in both the two on the left that that board at the end mm -hmm. runs counter to the ends of the uh, mm -hmm. the the other board and i guess i would encourage you to put it back in the same manner to close off the ends of those boards that's my only recommendation she's nodding yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. okay Um, so we had a motion to approve, and do we want to add to replace that board back where it was? No, I think it's fine. It's, I just oh, okay, to just a sprint. Okay. okay, so we had a motion to approve. We had a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Is there anyone opposed? Is there anyone opposed? No, so the motion carries. Ron, let the record state I abstain from that one. Okay. Paul, I abstain for that one. Uh Item number F, staff level COA applications. Uh, there are only a lot of them. So uh, 
First one up, architect's building is replacing a non-historic glass door along Pine Street with a new non-historic glass door. The only visible difference, if you could call it as such, is that the horizontal push plate will now be deleted. And uh, I went and took a look at this and I kind of made the command decision to call this a storm door. And I have purview over storm doors. So I approved the replacement of these non-historic storm doors with new storm doors that look almost identical. I think you could have rejected that one. That would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, if I rejected it, I'd have to bring you some that recommendation to yep. start trouble. Next up, driveway repair at the Astor House Bed and Breakfast. Uh, some portions of the existing driveway are going to be jacked and you know jacked up, hydraulically lifted to even them out. Um, great, the the driveway footprint isn't changing, so staff level approved. I didn't even call that ordinary maintenance. Didn't really care. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, ten oh five South Jackson new roof. Okay, I'm approving a new roof for ten oh five South Jackson. By the way, whenever we approve a roof for something like this. In the approval letter, we say, hey, by the way, you should really apply for tax credits because that's Boku bucks back in your pocket. Um, and this was no exception. That's in the letter, too. Good. Next up. Um, 805 South Jackson is a corner property. It's a little bit of a unique situation because a previous owner a long time ago effectively sold the backyard so that somebody could build a house in the backyard. So there's no garage here. Being a corner property, these two facades are street fronting facades, and they have no outdoor storage for anything except for their existing shed. That existing shed is at the end of its useful life. They want to replace it. They're very particular in stating that they're going to paint the new shed to match the house. So under my authority as being able to approve a non-visible unattached accessory structure, Despite it being somewhat visible, I have approved of a new shed. 735 South Jackson, this is a detached pergola on a back deck that's not visible from really any public right of way. Because if you try to go peek around the other side of the house, you'll see there's an attached one story wing to that house that projects out. So under my purview of non-visible accessory structures, this certainly fits the bill. Here, this was a property owner responding to Stephanie's reminder about stuff. This COA presented a whole lot of ordinary maintenance items, as well as a non-attached accessory pergola that they put in on the side, pretty tiny. The house essentially sits on a hill. I don't think you can see this from a public right of way. And then they did a little bit of hardscape landscaping that basically cleaned up a partially destroyed sidewalk that was already there. So I approved it. 500, <laughs> at 500 Congress at uh, St. James Square, is it? Um, they've got an existing cedar shake roof. They want to replace it with asphalt shingle. I don't get in the way of that. I would encourage a new cedar shake roof, but um, but it is not common practice for people to put on new cedar shake roofs, noting too that this one wasn't the original one by any means. The house probably had one, but anyway, they picked a, an architectural asphalt shingle roof. That's great. Hey, just for fun, as an eye chart, I put in a little caption from the approval letter just to prove to you. See, it says in that second paragraph, the Landmarks Commission notes, or staff notes, that you could get tax credits, because if you're going to be dropping $50,000, that's going to be worth $12,500 if you fill out the paperwork. Recommend you do that. And there it is. Uh, Jason. Yes, sir. If I can interject on that, I believe that the maximum on a single application is 40000 And they no. can parcel this up if they talk to SHPO between the yes. house and the garage and yep. probably hit multiple projects that cap out at no greater than forty. So yep. as the claim amount, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Shippo would steer them in the right direction. Yep. Um, 
Yep, yeah, I did this one already. Okay. <laughs> I was just really proud of it. So that, yeah. uh, that's near Ian's house. All righty. Uh, staff update. Uh, we're going out for um, requests for proposals for phase seven quotes, quotes for requests for proposals for phase seven, which will be our final phase, presumably, of the intensive survey update. And um, oh, the ASTRA meeting. Oh, yes. So anyway, we've already been awarded the CLG grant funds to do the phase seven. Council approved the acceptance of those CLG grant funds. We now have to request or solicit, you know, bids from Legacy Architecture and two others that meet SHPO's requirements and submitted letters of interest. So we will do that. Um, separately, Stephanie has reminded me that I spoke at an Aster neighborhood meeting recently mm -hmm. to present the opportunity that is the uh, potential National Register District for what's colloquially referred to as Little Aster, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's much of the Aster neighborhood east of South Webster, and it's the periphery of Astor Park, the park of Astor Park, and most of what's south of that extending to Valley. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Not Ashwagandha. Okay, Valley. Yeah. Um, 177 properties, 155 of which are presumed to be contributing houses. And the, the tenor of the feedback at the Astor Neighborhood Association meeting was generally positive with a straw poll indicating about 20 or so in favor and two or so opposed. So from the city's perspective, I would be starting to write a National Register nomination for the Astor Park District in the immediate future with an eye towards final completion and acceptance in the time frame of the next two years. Yeah. And, and thank you for that, Jason. It was a nice meeting. That you did a, you did a nice job there. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I, All right. Ron can attest to the fact that I did not do a hard sell on that. It was a I, hey, twenty to two was a pretty good number. I thought um, it, sh it showed that the people who showed up really, really want to be a part of it. So I, that was a good that was a good deal. When you write that application, Jason, is it would it be named or the district is, is the application going to then memorialize the name that's on the application what i mean by that is isn't that a separate neighborhood currently it's been identified as the aster well as the potential historic district the aster park district well and that's where i'm coming from isn't that the aster east river neighborhood association that's what i thought too oh, aster yeah. east yes it's and aster so East River neighborhood, yeah, for the city neighborhood. The neighborhood associations, they would they have boundaries over both of the districts. So we don't really use those in determining names or anything. I um, mean, it's the same as the older districts. They go through neighborhood associations, same with other things. The boundaries don't match. So and what I've been told is that Aster East River is inactive or defunct. Yeah. Which is why right. property owners are going to the Aster Neighborhood Meeting Association. So that well, there's some there's some overlap on streets and stuff like that. Yes, there is. So we do have attendees from that area. If you want to propose was, a different name, like the uh, Paul Martsky Memorial Historic District or something like that, that we could entertain. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Um, Memorial. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just looking to create maybe some type of differentiation between the existing Aster District just for confusion's sake going right. forward. Because that's a, yeah. So no big deal. I was just asking the question. Okay. Um, I, I hear you though, Paul. I think if they're two distinct districts, they should have two distinct names. Yeah. Instead of Aster Neighborhood and Aster Park. I don't think baby ass is going to get too many votes, but you know. <laughs> so we call it baby Aster. Right. Baby ass. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Anything else? No. Um, I just really quick question, and I'm sorry, I know everybody's been on here a long time, but for Jason and Stephanie. In the Astor neighborhood, from Mason Street to the Alloway Village line, there are some light poles on Monroe Avenue, the whole length of that South Monroe Street. Oh, yeah. They're 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 lower poles. They're 
pedestrian scale. They're not street lamps. And they've got kind of a decorative base to them, cast iron poles. Are those part of the Astor? First of all, does anybody know, are those historic? And are they part of the Astor Neighborhood District then? I don't know the first question. Those were put in when they reconstructed Monroe. Well, do you know when, Brian? Like, well, that wasn't long ago. That's just a couple of years ago. Nope, nope. That's right. I, I'm. That's where I'm disagreeing. Th those lights you're talking about are the ones on North Monroe from Mason Street North to Main Street. Yeah. I'm talking about the ones from Mason Street South to Alloway, and I'm questioning if those are how old they are and are they considered historic. So speaking strictly to the, are they considered historic? The district nomination doesn't exert any jurisdiction over the road right of ways or street furniture type stuff. So my hunch without going out and taking a look at those light poles is that they're not historic poles, but typically these sorts of things when they're to be replaced would be, you'd work with your alder person, and make an argument saying that hey it, it warrants a particular aesthetic so as to work with the historic district and to you know support property values that sort of thing because you know clearly you don't want a, a creosote treated pole there with a gooseneck light sticking off of it you want something that complements your historic district okay well i guess the is the question if there is an inconsistency in what is on that street that the inconsistency be made consistent that's what i'm <laughs> driving at if if someone were to replace one of those poles and they didn't replace it to match the others would they be wrong i would absolutely say that it would be appropriate <laughs> then, for it to be... then, then somebody in the building where stephanie and jason are needs to be brought to this at their attention <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there we go. And maybe I can start with Al Alder Galvin. For what it's worth, Paul, I've got the other side of the street, so bring <laughs> us both in. There well, we the go. pole wasn't replaced on your side of the street, so. <laughs> Is it only on Monroe that you've noticed this, or are there other sections so far that have happened? No, it's just on Monroe. Okay. So I'm nice. guessing this may be visible from Paul's living room. Mind, it's a long story. <laughs> well, we're out of time. Thank you. The date, yep, the date of the date of our next meeting is Wednesday, June twenty first. Thank everybody for putting our heads together tonight and working out these things step by step. That was a great meeting. I thought. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. With that, I will say farewell, and you guys can stay and talk. <laughs> I like uh, like to point out that this is the furthest past my dinner time this meeting has ever gone, and closest to my bedtime. <laughs> I apologize. I really do. I'm so sorry. It's not entirely your <laughs> fault. I think it was the debate over the architect building door that uh, really right. doomed us at uh, that horror show. <laughs> I miss the days of 13 minute meetings. I'll just say that. It, it, it was a solid meeting, though. Everybody put their heads together, and I think we did the right thing. So, yeah, I would agree. Oh, Move oh. to adjourn. Okay. Adios. No, Jeremy. Oh. Get a vote on it. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Ron's gone. I'll take over. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're out of here. <laughs> See ya. Thank you.